Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Ebo Folktales. I'm your host, Chidume and Joku Brown, here with a story to tell you from the heart of Ebo Land. Today's episode involves two separate yet connected stories from two different parts of Ebo Land, all about death, how it came to be in Ebo Land, and how mankind had to deal with it. Our first story comes from Isiala and Wa South, which is part of Abia State, which is part of Southeast Nigeria, and is part of the South Igbo subculture area. The story is called, Death is Introduced by a Wrong Messenger. Through the grapevine, mankind learned that their creator, Chukwu, wanted to destroy them, and thus they panicked. Why on earth would their beloved creator want to get rid of them. After all, had they not been serving him faithfully? They decided to hold a meeting in the middle of the town. There were two camps on this. One group wanted to support Chukwu, saying, We are his servants after all. If he wants to destroy us, we must accept it with grace. The other group said, No! Why should we die? There is no possible reason for us to die. Chukwu himself came to the meeting and explained his position. His thoughts were he regretted giving humanity immortality and it was causing a huge population problem and he had to find a way to solve it. Therefore, he wanted to introduce death. The group that supported Chukwu argued that this would be good for population dynamics and to make sure that every man would have enough to feed, while the others simply did not want to give up their immortality. They were way too used to it and the two groups kept arguing and arguing until Chukwu himself got so fed up that he left the meeting. Eventually, the two groups hashed out an agreement. They would hold a competition of sorts to see whose view got to Chukwu instead. The first group, the one that advocated for immortality, decided to send the dog as the messenger and advocate, for the dog was swift and fast. But the other group, much to the laughter of those supporting immortality, chose a tortoise of all things. The immortality supporters thought they had this in the bag. After all, there was no way that a tortoise could ever outpace a dog, so they called the race the next day. The rules for the race were simple. The two animals, both dog and tortoise, would travel across seven deserts and seven seas in the start of the early morning, and by night, they would reach Chukwu's house and present their case to him. The first one to present their case would enact Chukwu's decision over whether death should be introduced to mankind. As the race began, the dog sped off fast as lightning, while the tortoise steadily plotted on, as tortoises do. The immortality supporters laughed and went home to drink, confident that their lives would continue in perpetuity. However, by the middle of the day, the dog spied something on his nostril. He had found something that he found delicious. A pile of shit. Yes, you heard me. And he decided to eat it and fall asleep while taking a nap in the middle of the day. The tortoise, meanwhile, was focused on his goal because he had been assigned a message. So he plowed on, past the dog, and by evening time, he arrived at Chukwu's house, bearing the message that humanity should be allowed to die in order to help with population dynamics and population control. So Chukwu made his decision. Just as he did, the dog burst through his doors, saying that humanity should not die. But Chukwu said, too late. The tortoise came here first. You should have come here faster. And thus, death would have to be introduced to the world. The immortality supporters were stricken with grief, but as much as they could try and beg, there was nothing they could do. Chukwu's hands were tied, for he had made his final decision. Our sequel story, of sorts, comes from the Avu community of Owere West, which is found in Owere, which is part of Imo State, which is also in the southeast part of Lower Nigeria, from which our story comes from. Part 2. No Distinction in Death, also known as Death is an Idiot. After Chukwu had introduced Death, or as he was called, Anwu, man's heart was saddened forevermore. But Anwu had a job to do. He had to go get his newly found victims. So when he came down, he went straight to the youngest people to collect their souls. The youngest people begged with him to allow them more time to enjoy themselves. They were young. They shouldn't be killed at such a young age. Why doesn't Anwu just go take the old people? They've finished their time. They don't need any more time to live. So Anwu thought, Okay, that makes sense. So he went to go and see the old people. 
but they convinced him that it was not right for their time to die. They said, we have suffered for a long time and we should be allowed more time to enjoy their lives and teach our children and pass on our wisdom to our great grandchildren and even further beyond. And in spite of our age, we haven't built any homes for their children. What kind of grandparents would we be if we did that? Go to someone else, Anru. So, Anru decided, okay, what about the little children that they mentioned? But the little kids argued, we haven't done anything wrong, we just got born, we've only had a few years to live. So, we have not been regularized into society, we haven't done anything important yet, so we need to fulfill our roles before we die. So our death would mean a lot to society if all the children started dropping dead. So death decided that, okay, I'll go to the poor people then. But they said, we should be left alone so that we can have time to look for more money for us to leave to our children. We've been suffering all our lives and we haven't enjoyed anything. We do not deserve to die and how can you be so cool as to not give us anything to pass on to our kids, Anwu? So... Anwu was getting very annoyed, but also very confused, so he thought, okay, I'll go to the rich people. Surely the rich people would be willing to die. So when he got to the rich, they said, wait, 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 we should be allowed to organize our business properly before dying. We should be allowed to complete all of our building projects they were carrying out. Who's going to pay all the people if the rich suddenly die? So they even tried to bribe Anwu with some money so that he could leave them and their relations unmolested. So Anwu felt that some of the arguments and requests were reasonable enough to be given a second hearing. So in his wisdom, Anwu decided to go back to Chukwu to explain the situation to him. Chukwu was not pleased by this. He thought that Anwu was a right old idiot. Why on earth would you seek the information and opinion of the people that you're supposed to collect from. So instead, Chuku decided, okay, Anwu, I'm gonna pluck out your eyes and deafen your ears so that from now on, you are gonna pick people equally, regardless of whether they're young, old, rich, or poor, or whether they lived a good life or a bad life. You are death, you are supposed to be equal. And no matter how much someone begs, they won't hear you and you won't be able to see what they look like anyway. So from now on, your job will be to do just that. So therefore, in Igbo society, death is equal and doesn't care who he takes because he can't see or hear you. So don't bother trying to beg or bargain or plead with him. Thank you for listening to this episode of Igbo Folk Tales. Images are provided by Wikipedia, ResearchGate, and Google Maps. Music provided by John Bartman. Please check out his public domain free music for your own YouTube videos. Thank you and hope to see you again soon.